Hey everyone and welcome to my 100 days custom challenge map. In the good old classic map of the island, I have created custom spawners for every single DLC creature throughout the entire game and crammed every single one of them into this tiny map. So we're talking basilisks and carcanos that can spawn on the beaches, reaper queens and void worms that can spawn anywhere on the map, wyverns and magma saws inside the artifact caves, and just a whole bunch more ridiculous mess. In particular to every cave having individual challenges, a couple of mini bosses that can spawn anywhere, and to make all of it even worse, I live streamed the entire progress to a live audience, and they decided that my best course of action was to begin in the Arctic. And thus to mark the beginning of day one, I spawn in the north, in the Arctic, and immediately froze to death. On my second spawn, I spawned into a pack of direwolves and immediately died again. On the third spawn, things finally seemed to be okay until I got jumped by a wild managarmer. Can I help you? You're level 115, can I help you? Guys, what do I do? And then at my fourth attempt at spawning in the Arctic, I managed to get into the same safish area once again, and this time I was safe as I got to watch the managarma zoop away. However, I was constantly freezing to death, so I had to build a campfire and just sit there for long periods of time, regenerating health slowly. I managed to kill a penguin for some hide and get some polymer in the process, and then I proceeded to painfully, slowly freeze to death anyway, despite having my campfire and torch. When I respawned, I thankfully spawned again in the safe area, where I got to admire the spaghettification of my corpse, before cracking down to work and building myself a thatch hut, harvesting my body for the free meat, and then camping in a campfire again. Once I finally had some HP, I killed a trilobite for some oil, pearls, and chitin, and then returned to the campfire, which is where I spent basically the entirety of the night of day number one, and helplessly watching three carnos wandering nearby. At the start of day number two, I immediately expanded my base and then camped the campfire again. I had the fortune of finding another nearby trilobite and then discovered that the trilobite baited me into the territory of an ice worm. Knowing the impending doom, I stopped and just waited for the ice worm to finish its serenade of a mating dance. Oh, dear God, what is happening? I don't think it's meant to do that. The fact that it moves that way is terrifying and then it finally kills me. Now at this point, I didn't have a chance to make a bed, so upon respawn, I had to try a naked run back, only to discover another ice worm. Spawn number seven, I got spawn camped by an ice worm. Spawn number eight, I managed to run past an Alifocano. <laughs> Goodbye. And then ran towards a local tropical land, seeking refuge, then came across another ice worm. Spawn number nine was death by Daodons. Spawn number 10 was met by another ice worm. I'm not gonna spend my entire time bashing my- oh, ooh, oh, this is- <laughs> And then on spawn number 11, I found myself at a tropical beach next to the Arctic and I decided, you know what, this will do. Screw the Arctic. So upon beginning my new beach life, I smacked a couple of rocks, punched some trees, made a campfire, and I froze to death anyway. Upon respawning for the 12th time, I found a Lystro and killed it for its hide. I used the flesh of the Lystro to capture my first Parasaur, to which I use his unconscious body as my own personal inventory and storage. While waiting for the seeds of friendship to take root, I killed another Dilophosaur and finally began making my first wooden shack. Shortly after, I got naked and scouted the beach for potential tames or dangers. I came across a moss trot which I attempted to tame, but once I asked for cooked prime meat, I abandoned it. While I continued my scouting of the local area, I spotted an Alpha Carno, though thankfully not too close to base, and then I concluded the night by smashing rocks and metal and crafting my first metal pick. Upon the morning of day number three, I used my level 36 parasol to get some narco berries while using my level 15 parasol left in turret mode for alarms. While away, the alarm parasol got attacked by a beautiful looking raptor, which fled once I got too close. I bonoed it and knocked it out underwater, but somehow it could still breathe. Thus I went to the dodo massacre for meat, during which I spotted a beach rex and kited it away. Once the pretty level 10 raptor had tamed, I searched for the hidden valley, but instead found a vending machine, which was a gacha trapped in between some trees, which dropped a ton of crystals, though mainly just giving me salt. Very fitting, as I'm a very salty person. Once I reached the hidden valley, I'd spotted the coconuts, which got killed by a couple of beavers, and allowed me to harvest a ton of free chitin organic polymer. I almost found my first blue drop, which gave me a primitive Gallimimus saddle. On the way back home, I found another blue drop, which had given me the illustrious crop plot blueprint. 
During the night of day number three, once I'd gotten back home, my paralysis had detected a 130 terabirds. I vastly did not have the narcotics to take this down, so I had to kill it quickly before it killed my useless teams. Then later that night, I mounted my raptor to continue exploring. I got attacked by another raptor and some Titanic mirror, and then a 115 Thorny Dragon joined the fray. This thing was wrecking my raptor, so I had no choice but to jump off, abandon it, and save myself. I'd begun the morning of day number four with a stone trap full of Thorny Dragon, which I then successfully kited it into and knocked it out. Now unconscious, I tried to find any easy prime dino such as a Stegosaurus. I did find a peaceful Mega Kelon and I rode it back for a while and then returned to the Hidden Valley and found a wrecked getting killed by turtles and that netted me my prime for the Thorny Dragon. Shortly after, I went on a massacre killing a couple of dodos for hide and meat and unknowingly, a stray arrow had miraculously hit a Therizino in the distance. Ah, why are you angry to me? What did I do to you? Why? The Therizina then chased me down and it destroyed me. Upon respawning and collecting my stuff, on the way back home, I found a level 10 moss shops that only wanted rare flowers, which I had already gotten from all the beaver dams in Hidden Valley. Having tamed the moss shops, this netted me a very valuable fiber gatherer. So I spent some time gathering resources. Until I was finished, I left the moss shops at base, got naked, and checked out the nearby Arctic to see if the ice worms are still there. But it turns out the moss shop was still on follow, and in a panic, we both died to die wolves. Upon respawning, the same die wolves immediately killed me again. Upon respawning once again, I got my stuff back and killed one of the die wolves, although I could not find the rest of its pack, which was a big concern. I then spent the rest of the night farming knuckleberries. However, during the grind, the Therizino from earlier decided it wasn't satisfied with killing me earlier, and it attacked my parasols and killed me again. Once I had respawned again, it had finished off my gathering parasol and before I could remove turret mode off the other one so it could follow me, the Therizino killed that one too. And that meant at this stage I have lost every single tame. And it's only day four. For the rest of the night, I begrudgingly gathered the meat and hide from my late tames, put everything away, and upon leaving my base, the Therizino was camping my doorstep. Oh my god, why are you right there? Upon yet another respawn, I put down some spiked walls and checked on my thorny dragon, my final saving grace and my final hope, and then heard the telltale sounds of a Dilophosaur attacking my dragon, wasting his taming effectiveness. Frustrated, I killed the dragon, headed to base and concluded that session. Not one of my proudest moments. The morning of day number five marks a new session and I logged in and found a 115 die wolf attacking my walls, presumably from the same pack that killed me yesterday. The dire wolf was distracted, so I grabbed the 40 dragon trap, bullied the wolf, and built the trap around it. Though during said construction, yesterday Serizino was attacking my spiked walls, but I noticed it was getting bloody, so I was able to finish it off, and thus removing a big local threat. But meanwhile, a Dilophosaur was attacking the dire wolf, so I killed that and offered it as a free dog treat. Next up, I crafted my first batch of narcotics and trank arrows, and I knocked the dire wolf out. During my hunt for prime meat, I tamed another moss shop using rare flowers. And whilst gathering more resources, another Therizino had spawned on my base. I created a new stone trap with stone railings for the larger hitbox to contain the Therizino in. And during the trapping attempt, the Therizino did run in successfully, but then when I tried to check its level, it casually just jumped over the walls and I had to try and kite it away, but it was fixated onto my trap. I got its attention and kited it away a second time, dropped off my die wolf and attempted to trap it again, which failed horribly. I'm really not having the best start of this playthrough. Once I respawned, the Therizino was beating up my Die Wolf, but for some reason it didn't then lose aggro. However, once I collected my stuff, my Die Wolf lagged behind on follow and I angled the Therizino again, so I kited it far away for good and updated my trap design. Day number six was a grindy day. I crafted a canoe to farm resources with since it has a large portable inventory, and thus spent the entire day resource farming, upgrading my base to Stone Tier, and taming a 115 Raptor. Day number seven began with violence as I killed a random Rex. During beach exploration, I got spooked by a tech strider which was emerging out of the ocean like Godzilla. And on my way back to base, I found an alpha raptor bugged out on a corpse, which gave me my first alpha kill for free, though nothing good in terms of loot. I then stole another Rex skill from a Bronto. I found a blue crate with an apprentice giddy chest. And then once I was done resource harvesting, I made a few gateways, boarded my canoe and headed to Kano Island. During my journey, I scouted the outer rim, Got chased by a rex, spotted a T-posing shark, admired a rex dancing with a Mega Kelon. 
I also found a special blue loot crate containing some cosmetics, and then eventually I found my key target, a lone Argentavis. I made a trap, got its attention, and captured it flawlessly, then knocking it out. I then canoed back home to get my direwolf to farm some stegos in the hidden valley. During the process, I found a bonus yellow loot crate with a 168 weapon damage Jademan crossbow. This is incredible to have this early and will be a huge help to my progress. Day number 8 began with me inspecting the Godzilla Strider from earlier. It was a 115 and it required no missions to tame, only Mutagel. Shortly after, I then killed a level 85 Diplo for its prime, set the prime in the canoe, took it to the Argy for a fast tame, put it on follow and paddled my way back home, and then I grabbed the direwolf for another journey. During my travels, I found an Alpha Raptor which I left alone, I found a Gacha and some Aberration Mushroom spawns, and then towards the Redwoods I found a Spinosaurus. While exploring, I blindly wandered too close to the claws of a Therizino and panic ran away, straight into the moors of a basilisk. I got blasted with poison but survived and escaped, and then I killed the 35 Spino for good measure. During the Redwood Adventure, I got mobbed by a pack of four raptors, and once I finished killing them off, I spotted a void worm and immediately ran away. Taking the scenic route back home and exploring more of the area, I encountered a Managarma which appeared to be stuck in some trees, and I noticed it was a max level 150, so I left it alone to tame later, but the Managarma had other ideas in mind as it repeatedly jumped on me and scared the crap out of me. Eventually, the Managarma lost all interest as I continued my exploration adventure and ran down the beach towards the swamp. While I force feeding my Diable for some healing, I encountered the terrifying sight of a Reaper Queen falling off a cliff in front of me. It's so... No! No, 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 that's so bad, that's so bad, that's so bad. As much as I had to run away, I also had to pause for stamina, and while things did seem safe at the time, I noticed the ground open behind me. I ran away again, I paused for stamina again, and then I got hit by an invisible mob. For the third time, I ran, but this time my K-camera turned backwards, and I saw the telltale signs of a Reaper's barbed projectile attack. She was invisible. I dove into the river and swam away, but at the end of my stamina, I had to pause and take a break, and I noticed she was very much still aggro to me. The combat music was playing, I see the barbed projectile attack yet again, and I panicked and just dove into the ocean, but my wolf still had no stamina, so my only choice was to abandon it, swim to the beach and die, hoping to take the queen's attention away from my dire wolf, but as I returned to recover it, it died to a level 10 megalodon. I looted my direwolf's corpse and tried to kite the now visible Reaper Queen on my canoe. However, every time she was too far into the ocean, she was tethered and kept trying to retrieve back towards the beach. She was also too tall to be drowned, but I couldn't give up. This Reaper Queen was a huge issue. So I kept on trying and eventually managed to drag her back to the beach where she came from, and thus I took the longer journey to Kalo Island and then back to my base and derendered her in the process. I got all my stuff back and I called it a night. On day number 10, I had yet another Therizino spawn near my base. This time, I wanted to try to tame it, but it ignored my trap, ran into my spiked walls, and attacked my tames, so I had to put it out. I spent most of the day farming resources to expand my base and craft some gateways to trap a T-Rex. However, when I tried to get its attention, there I noticed another barbed attack. It was another Reaper Queen. What? No! Reaper Queen! Oh, God, God damn it! There's an invisible Reaper Queen again! Twat game! All I could think to do was panic run to the beach and dive into the ocean. I couldn't risk kiting the Queen to my base, so all I could do was paddle my way to Kano Island and miraculously not get attacked by any sharks or sea creatures. I somehow made it to Kano Island injured but in one piece. So my first priority then was to gather meat to heal my raptor while making an emergency crab shack. I was going to be stuck here for a while. On the plus side, Kano Island offered me my first red drop, to which I got an apprentice megatherium saddle. I had also finally dinged level 62, which meant I could finally get the Argentava saddle. I just needed chitin and hide, but thankfully I was trapped in the best place to farm it in. So I knocked out a couple of raptors to get some more fighting power, chitin and killed a couple of Argies for the prime meat, I farmed scorpions and trilobites for their chitin, and once the Argentava saddle was made, I got naked, left my stuff at my base, I took the saddle to the canoe, and I paddled my way back home. However, on the way back home, I spotted a Reaper Queen once again, and while I safely skirted around her, while I was deep in the ocean, never mind, as I, as I was good. Ah, Jesus! Well, 
Didn't anticipate that one, did I? There's another one ahead, by the way. I got surprise attacked by not one, but two psycho sutures. Since I was naked on the back of a canoe, they killed me very quickly. Using the Instructors Plus transfer tool, I was able to get my stuff back relatively quickly, and I finally saddled my Argent Apis and flew to Kano Island to retrieve all of my belongings. While there, I did explore the island a little bit more, and I spotted an Alpha Reaper King. I am so glad I didn't stick around for too long. During all the excitement, my chat named the Argent Avers Kentucky Fried Canoodle, except we didn't actually remember what Canoodle meant. Um, it just sounded funny. Now finally airborne, I took my journey to the local mountain for metal and crystal. I did get attacked by a griffin along the way, but thankfully it de quickly. Then I kited a rock elemental off the mountainside and finally got enough crystal to make a super spyglass. Feeling a little more safer and a little more prepared, I headed to the redwoods but noticed that the void rim from before was ominously missing, which is never a good sign. I also spotted an ice wyvern and a 125 mana grimer which confirmed I definitely was not safe. Continuing my journey, I found a level 10 dodec and a pink ovis, both of which I took home, and I also grabbed a level 55 Anki from the protection of a 110 rock elemental. A good portion of day number 13 was spent farming beacons on Kano Island for loot. Once I got back home, my dodec had finished taming and a chatter named it Tokyo Drift. The next up, I knocked out my Ankylosaur, farmed a couple of tech parasols for metal and oil, plus more rich metal from the mountain. I did also try to kill an Alpha Raptor, which was really playing hard to get. Eventually, when I did kill it, it didn't drop anything good. But with all the new resources I had farmed, I made some extra refining forges along with my first electric generator and a refrigerator. And then the next day began with even more resource farming, primarily for obsidian. I also found a rare pink loot crate on Kano Island, which contained two Genesis Part 1 Tier 1 loot crates. However, I didn't get anything good. I spent some time with Tokyo Drift to do some efficient stone farming, and then I spotted a level 85 beach rex near my base. Now, as much as I wanted to tame it, my trapping game was clearly off, as it had no interest and it ran straight to my teams instead. It killed Skittles and Kalasaur and Chop Mops and Moss Chops before I finally took it down. And thus I was forced to scout the mountain for a new Encalosaur, which took me all night to finally settle on a level 55. It wasn't until the next morning that I finally had an Anki to knock out. Meanwhile, on the plus side, I'd finally had the resources to make a harpoon launcher and net. However, during the very brief moment I spent crafting the harpoon launcher, I'd already heard the telltale sounds of an attacking raptor and discovered my Ankylosaur was down to 33% taming effectiveness. Feeling salty, I rebuilt my trap and I left the Yankee to wake up. I feel like this is a good time to remind everyone I am playing on double spawns, which definitely means double the danger. Though I have to admit, it is funny that I seem to be getting more issues from vanilla dinos than the DLC ones. So far, while waiting for the Incalosaur to wake up, I found and netted a 120 Volonosaur. I thought my luck was finally improving, and then discovered that every arrow was ghosting. The net gun had bugged it out, and the Volonosaur broke free and almost destroyed my armor. On the second attempt of netting it, my hit landed and I was able to knock it out this time. I returned to Kano Island for more prime meat farming and during the process, I found a remarkably colored trilobite which the chat fell in love with and immediately named it Pepsi. So I made a fishing basket and I tamed Pepsi. Meanwhile, my Valonosaur had tamed to level 166, which is by far my highest level tame so far. What do I name it? Someone think of it. Actually, how do I roll? That wise. You rolled. Oh my God, it rolled badly. It rolled so badly. <laughs> Look at the melee. Oh, good lord. Zoval. You know what? Sod it. I'm going to call it Zoval. Thankfully, my brand new Valonosaur was still enough to kill a nearby level 95 Rex and a bogged down Managarmo of whom seemed to really enjoy being shot at. Day number 16 begun with a cursed loot crate. Oh, and I got a Diplo Saddle blueprint. Just a little nugget of sunshine on top of my crappy cupcake that made no sense followed by me crashing while attacking Akano. are you serious oh my uh... upon logging back in i spotted a beautiful 125 raptor so i surprised adopted it i also re-knocked out my incarnosaur and then begun the early yet long process of building a new base location i had enough of the arctic beach life and i needed to progress so after the earliest part of building i returned to kana island to collect my raptors however to speed up the process i had a couple of them follow me across the ocean which so far has been quite safe and while the ocean journey did end up being safe again the beach however was inhabited by a reaper queen which the tudor level raptors challenged to a fight i left them all to it 
Day number 17 began with the Ankylosaurus finished taming, so I dismantled the trap along with my base and continued the long but necessary process of transferring all of my dinosaurs, resources, and items to my new base location. And of course, during one of the journeys, I crashed and almost died to something? Maybe falling damage or maybe even a dino attacking me? I'm not sure, but I just logged in with very low health. By the way, among all the double spawns and DLC creatures, have I mentioned the introduction of mini bosses on this map? Yes, careful be getting the bus home at- oh, 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 Kevin! Kevin told me to add two mini bosses. This is one of them. Because my husband did tell me to add some mini bosses, and one of them is a Jet Black 360 Tech Giga. However, at this stage in the game, the smartest thing for me to do is to avoid it. Additionally, since everything was streamed to a live audience, it's only fair you get to witness this moment. I've got brain damage in the best way. I've already got a minor case of severe brain damage I'll have, you know. Only a minor case of severe brain damage. <laughs> ignore that, ignore what's happened. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm still not sure what happened, but I got jump scared by nothing. Moving on, moving on. During my journeys, I did find a level 60 thorny dragon, which is a great early game sort of wood. I then killed a Karkonos for polymer, killed some Tecparasaurus for oil, then a Karno, Stego, and Argentavis for prime meat, all for the thorny dragon. Day number 19 seems to be uneventful, where all I did was search for sand and cactus sap to produce clay and boomerangs. Then on day 20, I spotted a 145 snow owl. I used Zoval the Velenosaur to clear out the area and painfully watched the snow owl and an Argentavus fly to the skybox in an epic battle. Eventually, I got them to attack my Argentavus, and while I tried to use my RG as a tank so that I could knock out the snow owl, it didn't work, my RG almost died, and the snow owl did die. In hindsight, I really should have netted the wild RG as well. On the plus side, I found a 125 Megatherium, though it was surrounded by a lot of danger, such as Alephacano's new Tyrannus, so I had to kite it away towards the volcano, and then use a net gun and built a trap around it and knocked it out. Now, remember that pig sheep I kidnapped a while ago? Yeah, it despawned, so I had to use prime meat on the Megatherium instead of mutton. I really regret not killing that sheep, but with the Megatherium knocked out, full of food, and reasonably protected, being so close to the volcano and spotting a nearby fire wyvern made me feel ambitious. Too ambitious. While killing a nearby Alpha Raptor with Zoval, I spotted a fire wyvern getting a little too close to my Megatherium, but seeing its level made me feel even more tempted, so I jetted my way into the moor of the volcano. Ooh, or I can be brave. So there's an egg to my left. If I remember correctly, there's three nests I put down. One up there and one down. This isn't great. This one's too too safe. Except for that right there. What about you? 95! Oh, this feels so... This feels far too dirty. Oh, it's aggroed now. Oh, crap. I'm playing it safe. Don't worry. I'm deliberately playing this safe. There's no point, like, rushing. Oh, the wave as well. Shh! Now, you must know, at this time, I was not aware that nests placed with simple spawners are hyper-aggressive, and even being near it will piss off all the local wyverns. You don't even need to touch the egg to get them to aggro to you. I really did not notice at the time. <gasps> get, get this one, get this other RG. That did a ton of damage, I'm breath. Yeah, I've lost this RG. I've lost it. Oh, it's a level 20? Not only 20? Right, I'm just thinking, I could get the Vlona out, but I might kill the Vlona in the process, I'm dead. I also did not know that in patch 338.23, which is very recent at the time of recording this, Wyvern's Fire Breath was recently buffed. And thus myself and Kentucky Fried Canoodle got shredded by a level 20 Fire Wyvern. This was devastating. As if things couldn't get any worse, because I play so much hardcore arc, I forgot to place a bed. So I spawned in my beach base and I had to quickly craft a torch and try running my way back to my new base, which somehow I actually survived. Then during the morning of day 21, I grabbed one of my raptors and ran to the volcano, but I could not find my cache. Since everything was being live streamed and clips were definitely taken, I had an accurate timestamp of my death. In Ark, corpse caches last for 30 minutes, while I arrived at the location after 31 minutes, which meant I was only one minute late and thus I lost not just my gear, but my cryopod of Velonosaur Zoval in the process. Now, trying to make the best of a losing situation, I did use my raptor to check the wither nests, but I concluded I was out of range of all of them. And then, just as I was trying to be rational about my situation, well, 
That's unfortunate. I got cocky. That's what happens when you get cocky. And I wrapped the zombie still. Okay, hope I can kill it before um, I knock out. You're a 140? Okay. Lag! Lag! I lagged. I, I, I was... I hate saying I lagged. It sounds like such an excuse. <laughs> please tell me you saw that rubber band. Honestly, trust me, please go rewatch what happened. Later that night, I took my last remaining raptor solstice to the old beach hut and I searched through my hoard of random loot crate gear and chose to take home with me a pike and an apprentice crossbow. I tried to end the night with a saber tooth tame, but after a poorly timed reloaded glitch, it broke free and ran away. I started day number 22 by getting naked and running back to my old base yet again. I wanted to see if there were any ice worms still lurking about, but instead I got stuck in terrain and I had to cheat suicide. I then begrudgingly spent some time picking narco barriers with my bare hands. I then crafted some narcotics, gathered sand for boomerangs while naked, and then crafted the pieces for a small ramp trap. I slingshot a level 40 raptor and tracked out a 168 raptor and then after placing down a ramp trap to get an alpha raptor it was having none of it and was attacking the walls outside while I was stuck inside. Eventually the alpha raptor then fled away and surprise sprinted back into the trap which finally netted an easy kill though a bit of a frightful one. Still though no good loot. To continue what was clearly a very lucky winning streak so far on the way back home on foot this happened. Oh crap, I gotta make a trap quickly. What the hell? Yeah. Huh. I forgot about the car note. Okay. No, 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 no. Right. Uh, don't panic. <laughs> I then killed it. With my lovely new supply of prime meat, I tamed up the two raptors and the chap named the tech raptor Tech Rack the Sandman. Later that night, I billable trapped a level 25 Stegosaurus to use as a versatile gatherer. Nearby, I also spotted an Alpha Carno near my trap, so I tried to trap it again and it went wrong. After spending most of my day chasing the Alpha Carno and farming resources, my Stego was tamed in the next morning. And then, just as I saddled my Stego but hadn't quite used it just yet, a Managarma landed on top of it. Now I tried to gateway trap the Managarma, but the broken billboards prevented any building placement in the area. Then when I finally did trap the Managarma, a Carno joined in the battle. Then on top of all of that, a Therizino got involved as well and dealt the killing blow on my brand new Stego before I even had the chance to use it, which then caused the Managarma to just fly away. A job well done, assholes. Following that event, I got beaten up by a level 20 Rex and its Therizino friend. And then come daytime, I wasn't feeling particularly optimistic about my situation, so I bred up a couple of raptors to gain the numbers and the throwaways, and then set out to farm to rebuild my trap and attempt the Alpha Carno again. This time, it went better, however, it died very violently. It did, however, drop a genuine crossbow, but it was not better than my current one. I then dismantled and moved my trap to capture this absolute clown of a level 95 Carno. I saved up on some narcotics by knocking it out of the boomerang and protected it with spiked walls. Then I turned my attention to a nearby seemingly stuck level 95 Rex. As I placed down my final gateway to trap it, it suddenly developed a brain and simply ran out. While I tried to make a new trap nearby, I discovered too late that the Rex was now eating my clown Carno. Having already used some narcotics to keep the Carno asleep, I didn't have enough for another large dino, so I quickly farmed up the nearby mushrooms for narco shrooms, crafted extra narcotics, and while waiting, I spotted a brand new Alpha Carno spawned between me and the trapped Rex. There was also two Alpha Raptors on the opposite side of my base. Apparently my choice of new base location is just an Alpha Dino's paradise. Eventually, I did manage to boomerang the Rex down and I quickly rebuilt the pen yet again to trap the Alpha Carno. Thankfully, this was a much easier kill and I got plenty of prime meat and still no good loot. Now, since everywhere around me was just surrounded by alphas and death, I decided to venture into the water cliff opposite my base and I came across a 140x Spino. And I also found a cyan sheep, which I did not hesitate to massacre for the mutton this time 
I then killed a nearby level 20 Rex and refrigerated the rest of my mutton and I called it a day. That was a rather exhausting session. As you can imagine with the fire within having reset my progress and all those failed tames and messy alpha kills, this was a really training session. The early morning of day 26 begun with yet another Alpha Raptor kill, followed by a level 125 Raptor knockout and tamed up to 182. Meanwhile, I collected the now 137 Rex from yesterday. Then, for reasons I can't really figure out, but according to the footage, I naked ran my way towards Kano Island, but I got killed by a Raptor. I'm guessing going for another Argent tame? Either way, I accidentally respawned in the canoe at my beach hut base, but while traveling, I came across a very unusual Spinosaurus in a location they don't normally spawn in. Now, if you remember the 360 Black Tech Giga mini boss from earlier, I did say multiple mini bosses, and this is the other one. But to be certain this was correct, the only logical thing to do was to ram my face into his leg to find out. And again, I'm really not sure about the footage, but I was naked running and got killed by another raptor. I really have no idea what I was doing on this day. But then after respawning, I farmed and crafted some more narcotics, as well as crafting a rex saddle for my brand new rex tame. And now that I finally had my first big combat tame, I went on a rampage just killing things. On day number 27, I prepared for my next Argentavis tame and I went to Kylo Island again. However, this time I could not find any Argentavis that were easily accessible. So I headed out and patrolled the beach towards a swamp and still could not find any Argentavis. So option number three was to take my Rex to the nearest mountain and to check for more Argentavis while also purging lower level ones. And I killed another Alpha Raptor in the process. I finally found an acceptable and accessible Argentavis, so I put my trap down and knocked it out. I built a campfire to stay warm and I babysat the archery throughout the entire night. And thus we come to the infamous day 28. This is going to be a day to remember. For once I logged in, I was immediately killed by an Ember Crystal Wyvern Air level 145. I could not get the beginning of this encounter on camera because I did not expect to log into the server with a Wild Wyvern on my base. But I did manage to capture my poor new Rex getting destroyed and as mentioned before, the fire damage had recently been buffed, and it proceeded to kill my RG along with a bunch of other tames in general. After a while, the Wyvern did fly away for a bit, and while I thought it was entirely distracted, I was still utterly bewildered at this point, and I didn't know what to do about this giant high-level Wyvern casually patrolling around my base. Remember, at this point, I lost my harpoon launcher net during the Volcano Wyvern incident. So I grabbed the saddles from my dead creatures and did some resource farming until eventually I spotted a second one. There were two Ember Crystal Wyvern airs flying around my base and killing every local creature. Additionally, apparently at some point a Wyvern must have broken my cables because I discovered my power was out. And yeah, that means I lost all of my mutton too. So while crafting repairing things, I heard combat, I spotted the damage numbers and I noticed my house light up on fire. Apparently the Wyvern air hadn't had enough and decided to kill a few more of my tames. I opened a gap in my wall and tried to panic run my raptors in, which allowed the Wyvern to breathe fire and kill me instantly. Upon respawning, I was able to whistle one of the raptors into my base, and then the wyvern circled around my house and got stuck on a wall. While it was stuck, I tried to shoot it to the face, which made it even more angry, causing it to patrol in another circle, and then it burned me through my house. I then proceeded continuing trying to shoot it whenever its head glitched in through the walls. But as you can imagine, this was not working at all. So I dumped everything into a crate and I tried to suicide kite it away, only to discover it wasn't following at all. So I kind of awkwardly ran around for a bit until eventually it did turn for me, but it was just too quick and I could not make any effective distance. Upon respawning, I spotted a bonus yellow crate outside and I figured, hey, why not? I parachuted off the cliff and I managed to get a 102 armored baryonyx saddle blueprint, so it was definitely worth it. I also noticed another raptor had been knocked down and off the cliff, so I was able to save another raptor. But it wasn't long until the wyvern inevitably returned, poked its head through my walls, and flew in circles until it got caught on one of my gateways. At one point during all the ongoing chaos, I spotted, of all things, a 135 Cinemacrops flying at my window and wanting to be a friend. Now this just felt like salt in the wound because a 130 Cinemacrops would have been an amazing tame, but this clearly was not the time for it. Now, ultimately, I really wasn't sure what to do about my situation as the Wyvern absolutely would not leave me or my base alone. And while I took a break to consider my options, Techrack the Tech Raptor had also died, so I guess he was still alive somewhere. Whoops. 
Now my only tames remaining were two raptors and a trilobite, which meant I had no chance of killing the wyvern. It was too fast and too powerful for me to kite it to any tangible distance. It was unusually hyper aggressive and tethered to my base, so kiting it in general felt pointless. I had no harpoon launcher or nets and I cannot burn it. It's too fast and too deadly to even bother trying to create a structure around it. Plus, I lacked all resources entirely and I barely even had 300 wood to build any structures or any tools to help with the situation. I also could not reliably land crossbow hits and I did not have any guns or stronger weaponry and I just refused to cheat kill it or dino wipe to remove it because I refused to cheat in my games. So after a good long hard think, I decided to try in vain to kite it away anyway. And it did actually cause the wyvern to get temporarily distracted by a couple of brontos. But once the brontos were dead, I observed that the wyvern uncharacteristically beelined it straight for specifically my direction. And this was not normal Arca AI behavior. This air had a vendetta and it was tethered to my location. So clearly kiting it truly was not an option after all. So thus in the morning of day 29, I finally landed a successful hit with my pike only to die again immediately. So I decided to reinstall the windows in my base so I could keep a better eye on the wyvern. And thus I began the long and painful process of slowly stabbing it in the face, which did cause many, many deaths since every time I could hit it, it could also breathe fire on me. Now, during this process, at one point, I did forget to reset the cooldown on my bed and accidentally respawned in my old beach hut. So, since I was at my old base, I decided to go check on the 686 Bino, and yep, it is still there, thankfully. I had to wait for the cooldown on my bed, so I had quite a while to kill time. So I decided to run to the local mountain, and I found a 150 max level Giga. Hopefully, that will still be there later. I respawned back in my cliff base and noted that the wyvern was distracted on some brontos yet again, so I quickly farmed some resources while my live stream audience introduced me to one of Captain Fat Dog's cheaper trap designs. But while I was watching the tutorial, the wyverns returned and killed me again, which repeated the cycle and shot that plan down entirely. So now we resume to the absolutely ridiculous plan of Operation Stabby Stabby. Eventually, on day 30, I'd finally killed the 145 Ember Crystal Wyvern Air. Despite the utter relief, the 135 Air was also missing. Meanwhile, the corpse of the 145 vanished before I could get a taxidermidermis, so the chat and I agreed that this was worth spawning in a crystal trophy mount to memorize the victory with. And then I proceeded to repair everything I'd stabbed and damaged since the pike strategy was rather destructive, especially when you're stabbing away your structures for over an hour. With the crisis finally over, I grabbed one of my last remaining raptors and wandered to the nearest mountain in search for more Argentavis. During day 31, I'd found a level 75 Argentavis, so I placed my gateway trap and I knocked it out. I then found another level 55 Argentavis and I Yona knocked it out in the air. I killed a Diplo for some prime meat, I took down the traps, and then I found and captured a nearby level 85 Snow Owl. Meanwhile, the chat named the yellow Argentavis as Yolk and the grey one as Shell. 
I dropped all of my tames at my cliff base and then I took my new snow owl on an exploration adventure. During said journey, I spotted a giant pack of creeper looking naked Dinopithecus and I really hate their models, they're so creepy. And then I finally spotted a 135 air in the redwoods and I absolutely fled the area. I wanted nothing more to do with these. I spent the majority of day number 32 resource harvesting, especially for narcotics and overall recuperating myself. However, during my travels, I did come across a 145 air in the Hidden Valley. Now, I killed the 145 air earlier and the 135 air was at the Redwoods. So what is this third one? Which is a big concern. Meanwhile, back at base, I tried to make a new harpoon launcher, but I still lacked the resources to craft one. So I killed a mantis for the organic polymer, broke some rocks for the flint and spark powder, crafted a fabricator to make artificial polymer, and then I finally acquired a new harpoon launcher and nets. Now I finally have a chance to defend myself should things go wrong again. During day number three, I farmed both metal bearing rocks and tech dinos so that I could double my smelting output. But then it would seem that we are missing a whole bunch of footage because I suddenly find myself cut to the point where I'm attempting to tame the 150 giga I discovered a few days ago. So I presume I spent the entire day metal farming for the gateway traps? But anyway, while the footage is missing, fortunately, everything was live streamed, which means that we got to keep the clip of where I had successfully trapped the giga only for my Argent shell to glitch into its hitbox, get stuck and get absolutely munched. So upon returning to the footage we do have, I've already lost my high level Argentavis and I'm now using Yolk the Yellow Argy. And now let me tell you, I have a really easy time with Giggers. They're one of my favorite tames. I've tamed many, many, many Giggers. I find them really easy, really predictable. And yet this one just refused to cooperate. It would not get trapped or whenever it did get trapped, it would just walk straight over it. It may be because of the mountain slope and the elevation, but I've tamed Giggers on this mountain before and yet this one just refuses to cooperate, which eventually resulted in the death of the first Argentavis shell. Eventually, after enough attempts, I had to return home to make some traps and also make some fur gear to survive the freezing cold nights. And on the morning of day 34, I scattered the nearest beach to see if I could make the taming process any easier. Thank Thankfully, kiting the Giga down there went really smoothly and kiting the Giga into the trap also went very smoothly. But while I usually expect to receive a bite or two when placing down the fourth gateway, the Giga managed to sneak in the third bite which confirmed Yolk's incoming death. But yet, somehow, the Giga also managed to reach me uncharacteristically far away from his trap. So I think it broke free as well. So now with both Arch and Davis already gone, I grabbed my snow owl to get all my stuff back. I dismantled and moved the trap to a new location, only to find a Reaper King and an Alpha Raptor nearby, which would have been a disastrous issue for the Giga. So I had to place my trap very far away and repeatedly shoot the Giga from afar to bring it to the new location, since I could not risk it biting my snow owl, nor could I carry anything for bait. Eventually, the Giga finally trapped, and it actually trapped this time. First of all, I killed the Alpha Raptor so I didn't have to worry about the Giga taking reduced damage into a ball. And then I began the long process of trying to knock it out. However, I grossly underestimated my preparation as before the Giga's tall ball reached even a quarter of the way there, I recognized I completely lacked a number of arrows or even crossbow durability to knock out the 150 Giga. So in between several continuous shots and building up the rising tall ball dots, I had to quickly farm all the necessary resources to craft a foundation, a forge, a smithy, in addition to farming knocker barriers to use in a mortar and pestle to craft even more arrows, while endlessly shooting at the Giga and trying to avoid leaving it long enough for its torpor to ever have the chance to drain again, since Giga torpor drains rapidly. This Giga tame was by far the worst one I have ever done. It was a long and stressful process of just repeatedly farming, shooting, farming, shooting, back and forth, repair, repairing again and again. And finally, on day 35, the Giga was knocked out. But the fight was not over yet, as I had to quickly farm even more Narcoverse and Narcoshin to keep the Giga asleep, because I used all my narcotics on my Tranqueros. I also had to space out my primate farming in such a way where by the time the first batch is spoiled, I'd already have more available for the Giga to eat. So I had to keep on farming and applying more primates, bearing in mind that all I have is a snow owl and a crossbow. But eventually, until day number 36, the taming process was done. All of the stress and hard work had finally paid off as I netted myself a level 217 Giganotosaurus, the apex of the island. Though I should note, this was recorded long before the Carcodontosaurus was introduced. So I did kind of miss out on that one. 
I packed up my Majesty Taming Kit and I took her home. The bad news is, however, is that I was still only level 76, which meant I was nowhere near getting a Giga Saddle. Whether from levels or even from an ocean deep sea loot crate, assuming I even had an ocean tame in the first place. So it's gonna be a while before I can even use this Giga in the first place. Day number 37 began with the acquisition of even more Argentavis, starting with a level 95 male and a 140 female. During my travels, I'd also spotted a level 90 tech rex and a level 130 male rex, to which I then made a rather budgeted 2x2 gateway trap, to which I was then able to trap and knock out both rexes in one go. Meanwhile, I also spotted a 125 mana gamma and attempted to trap that, to which of course it then broke out, to which I then attempted a second trap, succeeded and knocked it out. Now mana gamma tame is just a thing that might finally turn my luck around. I also had the fortune of finding another Ovis for some more mutton, which is really vital considering my previous batch had all spoiled during the Wyvern incident. And then, just as I was finally feeling good about things, I went ahead and fed my two Rexes the mutton, only to then have a nearby Valonisaur attack me and thus ruining the taming effectiveness, which is then followed by the surprise of a 105 Malagamera jumping on us as well. So while I'm busy trying to trap and subdue the Managarma before it damages my Rexes any further, the Velonosaur breaks out of its net and it almost kills me and heavily damages my bird. And then while I take advantage of the Snail's healing abilities, the Managarma also breaks out. Once everything had calmed down, I took a moment to check the taming effectiveness of my Rexes and they really were just sad. But on the plus side, my Managarma remained unharmed at 100%, so I moved over to feed it some mutton and then I found a second Managarma bugged above it, but it seemed to be minding its own business. So while waiting for my mana grammar to finish taming, I return to the Rexes to assess the situation and then decide just to let them tame anyway. It's unfortunate, but I can't afford to be too picky right now. However, I did then come across a 145 female Rex, although I will admit her stats were really garbage. But on the plus side, I took home and knocked out a level 100 in Colossal. After the Rexes had finished taming, I saddled up one of them and went to attack an Alpha Raptor, which I did not realize was a level 140. But I still managed to kill it, got a ton of experience, and even an apprentice metal pick. For my next objective, I needed to farm some metal. However, while going to the nearby mountain, I spotted a level 70 Giga, which honestly looks really, really cool. I do love the R Gigas. Now, regarding my Incarnosaurus, it is on the higher level side of things, and I needed it quite urgently. So I went back to my old beach base and ransacked the very small, slow growing crops that I had. Meanwhile, because my luck of Argentavus is clearly fantastic, I bred up and hatched a level 185 baby Argentavus. Shortly after, I'd also spotted a 144 Tech Rex, which I definitely trapped, knocked out, and fed with mutton. However, while it tamed to a grand level 208, its stats were terrible. I then moved on to the 145 female Rex and fed her some mutton as well, to which she tamed to 202 and we named her Wiggle. And now that my Managamma had finished taming and I had this awesome combat dino, I went ahead and killed a Mega Kelon, two Alaphacanos and three Alapharaptors. Not only speed leveling it, but also enjoying finally having that rush of power. I'd finally made an industrial grill along with a second refrigerator. And then my chat pointed out a very important detail I'd missed. Do you remember that Megatherium i tamed just before the whole volcano with an incident? Yeah, I forgot about it as well. I now have a 183 Megatherium just waiting to be collected. And I even had the apprentice saddle to go with it. During my journey, I'd also found a 130 male Managamera. However, the stats were subpar, but it can make to my current Managamera. The wild one is already so strong, so an imprinted one seemed required and therefore I quickly tamed the 130 male and it grew to have 31 melee, which isn't too bad, I suppose. And then to close off the night of day 40, I spotted a white Genesis part two drop, which contained a Jennyman Danonica saddle. For the morning of day 41, we begin with the immediate highest priority of breeding the Managamas. I needed that imprinted one as soon as possible. However, the baby had other things in mind as it got viciously ejected off the cliff. Thankfully, by this point, I finally had cryopods and I recovered it. Then moving on to my usual exploration, which I love doing in this game, I spotted this really crazy looking 135 saber tooth, but decided against it in the end. And also spotted a 125 female Giga, which is very tempting. I also came across and kidnapped a 130 Doa deck and as I took it back to base, I was able to heal it up with the Snow Owl as I knocked it out. And meanwhile, my little baby Managarma wanted a cuddle. So that meant the first quarter of the imprint was complete. I also spent the entire night and the next morning of day 42 farming berries with my Megatherium, crafting narcotics, imprinting the Managarma and preparing for a Giga Tame. 
And thus, during the night of day 42, I kited the Giga to the beach and spotted a 160 Reaper Queen. Thankfully, she wasn't too close to be an immediate threat, but she certainly was a concern to be aware of, as I still had no light pets to fight them with. But while focusing on the Giga, I did miss the first trap attempt, and the Giga ran straight into a Reaper King. Now, while I relented, I did eventually get the Giga trapped, only to have it not only walk out of the trap, but now the Reaper King is on the trap as well. This clearly was not my luck. So I flew towards the swamp and cleared out the beach to rebuild the trap with. And then after a long effort of kiting the Giga all the way down the beach, I was able to trap it and successfully knock it out. However, there was a bit of a situation with this particular Giga. Since, again, this is all live streamed, and somebody told me, quite simply, narco shrooms are better than narco berries. I accepted this advice without thinking, and I fed the Giga 214 narco shrooms. Now, why do I explain this after the second Giga tame? Because if you notice the icon right there, it vanishes. Whoever told me that mushrooms are better than narco berries, I am furious. Whoever said that, I am pissed. As it turns out, narco shrooms may give more torpor than narco berries and therefore could quote unquote be better. They do apply it faster, meaning the torpor rises faster and then depletes in less time than if I'd used berries. Which thus meant the Giga woke up and I remembered to stick to my known tactics and never listen to chat again. Last time I listened to chat. Oh, there's another one, hello. Oh my god, it's another one! <laughs> oh my god, I've doubled this game today. During the days of 43 and 44, I finally looked to address a very big flaw with my base, and that is the lack of any elevator or any proper ramp anywhere bringing tames up and down. So I built up an elevator tunnel, along with a ground level area for tames, and I also farmed crystal and finally made myself a greenhouse. And then for day number 45, I summoned a blue orbital supply drop, which are normally found on extinction. And I progressed through all the waves with my now imprinted mana grammar. In the end, I got a genuine flag chest and a mastercraft crossbow blueprint. So not really the best loot in the world, but otherwise I just really miss doing OSDs. And then on day number 46, remembering my overall bad luck with tame so far in this challenge, I decided to breed up another Managamera, but this time it had a higher level. And now also finally feeling a bit bolder and a bit stronger, it was time to finally play with Wyverns, but not the Volcano ones nor the Airs. This time I went to play with some Lightning Wyverns and get some eggs. And since Stonehenge is also populated with Deinonychus, I also grabbed a couple of Dinon eggs in the process. And then, as I made my journey towards the swamp to get some poison wyvern eggs, I found a level 10 elephant basilisk along the way. It took a really, really long time to kill. These things are incredibly tanky, but I managed to take it out and I took his fang in the process. Meanwhile, after killing a couple of poison wyverns, I found and stole a level 70 egg. Now, at this point, I'm feeling really bold and really ambitious. After having taken down lightning and poison wyverns, I then did poke my head back into the volcano. I came across the same nest from last time and I noted there was a level 151 fire with an egg. I was in a good position, however a bit spooked by the magma sores, and when I dismounted to fall into the nest, in a gut-wrenching turn of events, I fell straight past it. I returned back to the volcano as quickly as I possibly could with one of my parents' managamas, but just as I'd finally arrived and rendered the volcano in, Nibbles, my imprinted managama, had been killed by a 180 fire wyvern. Still, I had to get my stuff back, so I used my managama to land near the top of the volcano's rim, far away from any of the nests, and I quickly tried to use my structures plus tool to get all my stuff back, and despite my best efforts of being as quick as I could with the yes plus tool, a nearby magma saw had absolutely kobe me from a distance and burnt me to a crisp. So again, in the morning of day 47, I returned to the volcano, this time with an Argentavis, and sadly got the message that holy shit, finally, it has also just died. And then before I even made it to the rim of the volcano, a 185 woman had already aggroed and was chasing my bird down. And I will admit, I got a little angry at this moment. Now, I did log back in a couple of IRL days later, however, the server had been off and thus we are technically still on the same day of 47. My bird had died, but my player had survived and the wyvern is gone. This is because simple spawner dinos respawn on server boot up and thus every fire wyvern nearby had despawned and respawned elsewhere. I feel really dirty about this. 
So again, using S plus and an auto clicker, I managed to quickly grab all my stuff back and I ran back home on foot in one piece. Now, once I did get back home, since my new high level Managarma was still growing up and imprinting, I had to use my snow owl for a bit and I found a nearby red supply crate, which actually gave me an oil rig. So I was able to slap that down somewhere nearby and get some free oil. I took a break from progress for a while just to fly around and explore and I came across one of the rare special pink loot crates which contained three chippies and a Genesis part one tier one loot crate. This one gave me 50 trank darts and 20 nets along with a few die. Now during that same adventure but into the early morning of day 48 on the way back home I came across a 175 tropical crystal wyvern one of the more friendly ones and a 420 cyan spino I had apparently forgotten I made a third mini boss I totally forgot about that one then once I did get back home, I equipped my new imprinted Managarma, ventured out and found an orange Genesis part two loot crate and this one contained Element. I had no use for it yet, but hey, Element, yay. I also came across and attacked an Alpha Rex and I got micro raptured not once, not twice, but three times while it's attacking the Alpha Rex. By some miracle, the Rex never attacked me and I killed it. I also killed an Alpha Carcanos along with a Void Wyvern next to another Alpha Carcanos. And then to finish off the night, I went to get a green Genesis Part 2 drop and I got Bloodstalkered and really confused because I've not been Bloodstalkered in like two years. I killed it anyway and I got no good loot from the drop. For the entirety of day number 49, I finally spent some time expanding my pathetic excuse of a base by building up some platforms, some borders, and expanding the house itself, and finally turning it into an actual base of operations. And then at the end of day 49, during the night, I was getting wood from some beaver dams, and I found another rare pink crate in the Hidden Valley, this time with two tier 1 loot crates. I didn't really get anything good, except for 20 shocking trank darts. I spent the early morning of day 50 farming explorer notes for some experience grinding and from all the loot crate hunting I also came across an ascendant shock prod and these are amazing for grinding as you can see in this future clip right here. And that's with the explorer notes collected with my brand new Managarma I spent some time killing a few alphas and during my travels I spotted another mini boss dino, the 686 Bino. And so after spending a little time away for a bit of a break during the early morning of day 51, it is game time. I produced tons and tons of narcotics to get that spino. Although during the process as I was going toward the beaver dams and such, I did also come across a 160 alpha fire wyvern not too far from my base. So I quickly ran back home, cryopodded as much as I could and put the rest of my tames inside my new building. But then returning to the higher priority that is the big spino, I finally crafted an industrial cooker and the chemistry bench, which meant it was time to cook a ton of focal chili and as much exceptional kibble as I could muster. Once I had everything prepared during day 52, I returned to the spino and set up the trap. While shooting well over 100 arrows, even with my ascendant crossbow, it still took over 100 arrows to knock out the spino, but knocked out it was and I was finally able to move on to the kibble. At which point I actually did not have enough just yet, so I went to get some more Dunnalicus eggs to get some more extraordinary kibble as well. And thus, as I made my way towards Stonehenge, this happened. Bum, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. It is a lightning wyverns. You are level 90. And there's a bunch of crabs. Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I didn't, did, did I? No, I didn't make two of them. It's beautiful. It's a sheep, wait. It's a, it's a breeding pair. I did not, no, no, hold on, I'm sorry. Did I really make a spawn of a two of them? Where's the command? Bear with me, I'm so sorry. I need to confirm this. I did not mean to make a spawn of a two. I did not make a spawn of a two of them, did I? Quick spawn, where is it? It's like called boss spider, isn't it? No, a maximum of one. <gasps> Wait, maybe it's because I'm conscious. Oh, that's a mistake. Yeah, you're right. The one that's taming no longer counts as wild. So that's, okay. I configured it correctly, so technically this is completely fine and fair, though absolutely shocking. Whoa, hello. So clearly it was game on, as if one spinal wasn't enough work, I now had two of them to deal with, which meant it was time for an insane amount of grinding. And thus, from days 52 to 60, most of what I did was just getting eggs. Lots and lots and lots of egg runs. 
Now, to spare you the punishment of just watching tons and tons of egg farming, I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the highlights, but it might be a little bit uh, out of order. Overall, this happened within the span of day 52 up to day 60. So, in between all the egg farming and dying on the withered hunting, I also spent some time grappling onto redwood trees to manually harvest honey in my bare hands, and this did result in a few near death encounters. I also tried to tame a dire bear to make the method of farming honey easier, however, due to my usage of a crossbow, the dire bear took too much damage and died, and in perfect arc fashion, the very next loot crate I looted after the dire bear just died gave me a long neck rifle. The irony was not lost on us at all. I then proceeded to craft just as much extraordinary and exceptional kibble as possible and crafted an additional 350 narcotics as well. Now, during some of the farming, I misjudged the timings and the Spinosaurus woke up just as I was returning to it. And it hadn't gained any of its health back either, so it was very damaged. So in shame, I gathered some nearby fiber, wood and thatch, I made a foundation and a bed, I climbed into the trap and sacrificed myself to the Spino. But it did not even heal the Spino, so I killed myself for nothing. So I decided to demo gun down the gates of the gateway trap and let the Spinosaurus run around to kill and harvest until it was fully healed, to which I then trapped it again and knocked it out all over again. Now during day 54 on the second knockout, I fed the Spinosaurus some kibble. I gave it a total of 19 exceptional kibble and 15 extraordinary kibble and even some prime meat for safety. However, after it ate most of the kibble, I noticed that it was nowhere near complete. And thus I learned that Dodo Dex was incorrect with this one. And so I recovered what little five remaining kibble I had left and I just let the taming affinity drop. I was not ready to tame it after all. So I returned back to base and begun breeding out my Rexus so to get even more egg generation by using the fertilized eggs in the kibble recipes and upon the Spino waking up I discovered it had outright despawned. Which is very sad because the two boss Spinos were a breedable pair. So I went to check in the second one at Stonehenge and was happy to find it was still up and therefore I continued even more with my excellent adventure of which I'm going to spare you from. I skipped to the part where during all my journeys there was this really beautiful looking level 20 spider that's been wandering near my base for several days and somehow had been alive the entire time so I finally trapped it and tamed it with the goal of breeding its colors into the boss spinos in the future during my journeys I also came across a 160 tropical wyvern among the corrupted dinos of Kano Island I began my second attempt at taming a dire bear, this time level 60, and in true arc fashion, I got trued on. And not only that, but it was agonizingly slow at killing me. So I remained unconscious for a very long time and relented by just cheat suiciding. I wasn't gonna wait. I then continued the process of breeding my Rexes even more to sacrifice more eggs for kibble in between more continuous egg runs. Though I will mention during the egg runs, I did get a 176, 154 and 137 lining egg, so I'll be keeping the highest level ones for sure. My dye bed changed to level 88. Using the floating foundations from Structures Plus, I then proceeded to collect even more honey of the dye bear, and this helped speed up kibble production quite a bit. And then during yet even more egg rounds, I also came across a Genesis Part 2 drop which gave me a Mastercraft long neck rifle blueprint. Along with a bonus yellow that gave me some really nice ascended black legs and ascended mammoth saddle blueprint. I also got serenaded by an ice worm which has not happened since uh, day one I think. And just to ramp up the egg production even further, I grabbed myself an incubator and started hatching dinons to then breed for even more eggs on top of the wild ones I was getting from their nests. And as a random little side tangent, I also got a 115.85 tech power source for a metal and oil farm, along with taming a couple of dodos to craft the S plus hatchery to provide automation of egg farming from all the Dunonicus and Rexes that were now breeding. And on days 58 to 59, I searched all day and night to get a low level overwraps and eventually came across a level 30 and then all the way towards the end of the endless egg farming on day 60, I also came across a rare pink crate guarded by a 105 Reaper King, which I tried to kite away and I managed to get two tier one loot crates, along with an orange gen two crate nearby, which had a 96 armored ascendant wreck saddle blueprint, which was incredible, and a chippy tatanosaur, which was a nice little bonus. Then after grabbing another five more Dinon and Wyvern eggs, I found a level 10 Alpha Wyvern, which didn't really put up much of a fight and killed it. And then towards the very end of the night, at day 60, I came across a bonus yellow crate on the corrupted Kano Island. I had to fend off a few dinosaurs to get, and I got Ascendant and Genuine Chainsaws with 318% weapon damage. This is incredible for farming with. And now it is at this point of where it should be the morning of day 61. I have some bad news. And that is that all of that farming that we just did, 
all of that insane egg grinding, the sheer number of kibble, all the preparation to get the second 66 Spino after the first one despawned, the server abruptly rebooted and thus it wiped all simple spawner dinos, including the really pretty 66 Beamer I spent all that time farming for. So demoralized, I haven't logged in for a while, and that while has turned into a year. I got very, very sick, IRL. So the plus side is that now, as we return back to the challenge map, a couple of additions have been made. Since so over the last year, we've had the introduction of new dinosaurs, such as the Desmodus, the Fjordhawk, the Androsarchus and the Fenrir, and above all, the Carcodontosaurus. So from this footage onwards, you might see a few new dinos that weren't already spawning before, and it should overall contribute to an even more difficult DLC experience. So, after having not played the server for well over a year, the entirety of Day 61 was all about just re-familiarizing myself with my base, seeing what tames I had, where everything was, noticing that the feeding trough was empty and all of my perishables had perished. So no meat, no mutton, no berries. My storage was a total mess, so I organized all my resources and loot, grinded up a bunch of items, and imprinted a new managarma. And day 62 was all about upgrading my greenhouse while cooking up some random prime fish meat, killing a few alphas, killing some black pearls, getting beaver down to resources, killing the most passive alpha rex I've ever seen, spotting a 120 giga and the new level 60 character. And since my comfort is always loot crate hunting, I got a purple gen 2 drop with the mastercraft saddles, minigun and element shards, and got jump scared by an ice worm. Welcome back. On the obsidian mountain is also a triple giga encounter, found my first shadow main which scared the crap out of me and then I finished the day with a pinker drop giving me two tier one loot crates and some really great rewards. The map is truly welcoming me back. Day 63 was all about loot crate hunting and farming alphas, just really getting myself back into the game again. And day 64 was dedicated to checking texture items for their mixture of requirements, seeing if I can find a better level or something that I could tame and I managed to find and tame a level 125 Velonosaur. But even better than that, on day 65, I finally found my first light bearing shoulder pet, a level 80 feather light. So that's gonna finally help against any Reaper encounters. I also got some really nice flak legs with a bonus red. I also spotted and tamed a 80 male Velonosaur for a breeding pair, also stumbled upon a 145 Thunder Kaleo, tamed it, bred the Velonosaurs, and imprinted a brand new baby Velona. Day 66 is where the progression really kicks in, as I head towards the Redwoods to place down some gas collectors as I'm going to need a hazard suit quite urgently. And while doing this, I also came across and knocked out a 125 female Thyla. And while working on that nearby base, I encountered a Reaper King, which I discovered that my light pets is not enough and I still can't kill Reapers. On day 67, I spotted my first Renianatha. It was a male as well, so I got my first pheromone. Shortly after, I tried to get a yellow crate in the swamp and a couple of cat pros absolutely bodied me. But on the plus side, nearby, I found a female featherlight, which took a frustratingly long time to tame. It kept on flying over the ocean, would never land. But I needed this featherlight badly so I could breed backups in case I ever lose them against reapers. Later that day, I hatched up my first rexes to actually use, but they weren't a very good start. During day 68, I went looking for more megatheriums to focus on my brood mother boss army and I instead had multiple cursed ice worm encounters. Though I did find myself a 140 megatherium, along with a cursed plovia yeeting through the air. Though shortly after, I found myself a 140 female megatherium, which meant I had my breeding pair sorted. And as I come home to drop off my megatheriums to breed, I realized that my base is getting very rapidly overrun with new tames and babies, and I should really do something about it soon. On day 70, I healed my brand new imprinted megatherium and I used it to farm meat for the new babies. And I finally do my first cave, only on day 70. I chose a South Easy cave. This one contained Basilisks, Baryonyx, and Bloodstalkers in addition to their usual roster. It actually went quite well. I also did the Central cave, which also included Bloodstalkers and Ravagers, but thankfully my megatherium was really making quick work of everything. The majority of day 71 was spent cleaning up my base after a rather unfortunate whistle. And while cleaning up this mess, it allowed me some time to think about how to approach the next couple of caves because some of them are really quite tricky and I'm not entirely prepared. And I had a strange idea for the ocean caves. But first I realized I lacked the engram points for a scuba set so I had to use a mind wipe tonic. And then I also realized that I'm going to need a Karkonos, but to get a Karkonos I need the saddle. So I had to get some blue gems from the hard ice cave. 
On day 72, I acquired another member of the boss army, and that was a 150 Daedon, absolutely required. And while gathering prime meat for the Daedon, I got attacked by a Noglin. This is actually my first ever time getting attacked, because I didn't really play Gen 2 very much in the end, and I was totally clueless on how to deal with this. I just panicked and ran as quickly as it would allow me to. Oh my god, I do not like Noglins. On day 73, I found another Daedon for a breeding pair. Found some Ovis to kill them for their mutton. And Androsarchus in my base, apparently. And then I set on for the rest of the evening to build a breeding platform while organizing and breeding my tames. There was going to be a lot of babies in this very tiny base. And thus, day 74 continued with even more Rex breeding and tame organizing. And then once I was satisfied, I set out to find myself a saber tooth so I could do the easy snow cave. I found a 135 with really abysmal stats, but it's fine, it only has to do the small snow cave. To which, as I entered, I realized it was radioactive. Yep, gonna need that hazard gear. So on day 75, I tried the easy ice cave again and got absolutely wrecked. Oh my god, it was a bad experience. So instead, I moved on to the Kano Island cave, which was also radioactive, had a couple of rock drakes, but for the most part, it actually went very smoothly. And then once on my way back home, do you remember the 420 Cyan Spino from before? Yeah, so any creature on the map has a chance to spawn as a random 420 Cyan creature. I found a Ravager, so I grabbed it, knocked it out, and discovered I bugged up the settings and it could not be tamed. So that was a hefty waste of narcotics. But nonetheless, with the deadline really kicking in and me getting a little bit worried about doing the bosses in time, it was time to do my first ocean cave. I recently discovered that everything in the ocean caves ignore Karkonos, so I elected to cheese the cave with the Karkonos to discover that piranhas don't. I really am feeling the pressure for the deadline. Well, chin up, I gotta keep going. So on the day of 76, I started with the Upper South Cave. This one was populated by Baryonyx, Basilisks, Ravagers, and I think Bloodstalkers. Though thankfully again, the Megatherium really does make quick work of them due to the insect buff. And thus, when I came back home, I continued breeding more of my army dinos. I hatched one of the rock drake eggs I'd gotten from the Kano Island Cave. And while on the hunt for Therosinos, I'd also spotted a 420 Cyan Snow Owl, which was really beating up my mana armor, but I managed to knock it out. For day 77, I took a break from the caves to focus a bit more on taming again, and I managed to give myself a 135 Baryonyx and a 145 Therosino. Though in the process, I also spotted a female Rania Natha, and I still have my pheromone from when I killed the first male. So on day 78, that was all about Rania Natha taming, or more like impregnation. And while I planned to use one of my random mini Rexes, the hardest part about this Rania Natha tame was getting her out of the bloody swamp. She would not aggro long enough and kept on flying back into the swamp, and particularly to her Reaper King. But eventually, I managed to get her within the border of the Redwoods, netted her, trapped her, got the Rex out. Though alas, I couldn't manage to get a single imprint, but thankfully, even the most basic box standard Rhinianatha is still worth it for carrying teams. And then towards the end of the day, I went to the Kano Island Cave a second time, because it turns out I lost the artifact when I died in the water cave, so I needed to get another one. On day 79, it was back to the caving grind. And I began with the easy snow cave, this time using a Daedon, since they're tankier, they got more self-healing, it's better than my crappy saber tooth. And this time, by taking my time and using bowlers, this cave went a lot easier. And thus, my next option of caving was the swamp cave. And fun fact, by the way, the hazard suit does not work in a swamp cave for some weird reason, so I had to make myself a gas mask. The swamp cave has been filled with basilisks, seekers, carcanos, Poison Wivens, and I think even a low chance of an Alpha Basilisk, though I didn't see one this time. But, again, the Megatherium. It just does such a good job in here, even against the bigger threats. The Megatherium just wrecks. And thus that left me with only four caves left, the four scary ones I was worried about. So it was time to start preparing for the Lava Cave, and for this I needed Wiven Milk. And of course, getting Wyvern milk means knocking out Wyverns, so I tried to search the swamp for a poisoned one, but there were no female poisons available. So next up, I tried out the Lightning Wivens, found a 115, and died. But otherwise, I managed to knock her out on the second attempt, and didn't get any milk. Even after checking her inventory, it wouldn't let me. Then I killed her, and there was none in her loot cache, so got no milk. 
And I couldn't find any alpha weapons either, so on day 80, it was time just to try out and do the lava cave. This is one of the ones I was really afraid of. And I'd actually forgotten most of the spawns I added in, so there are a couple of surprises, such as stumbling upon a lava golem. So I had to quickly go back home, grab a thyla for the bleed. Although when I did try to bleed the golem to death, I accidentally cut it into lava anyway, so that was fine. And otherwise, it was an ominously safe journey towards the artifact, which was very concerning because I remember making this cave very scary. Though once I'd grabbed the artifact, I saw around the corner there were magma sores. Very lucky that it didn't spawn earlier in the cave, so I just got out while I could. So then once I got back home, I hatched up a couple more Rexes. My baby Rini and Nathan had fully matured, so I killed a couple of Ice Worms to give it levels for stamina. And then I continued to hunt for more Therizinos and found myself a 130 and 140 female Therizinos, which required a lot of Rex eggs and a lot of kibble. And then I found an Alpha 5 Wyvern, so I got the milk I needed, just a little bit too late. And then I ended off the night with some more breeding and getting those Therizinos tamed. On day 81, I was back in the taming grind and I also looted a tech grenade launcher from a Cyan Gen 2 drop, though unknowingly right next to a Shadow Main, which thankfully didn't aggro. I managed to find myself a 140 male Therizino, and I also elected to go try and find some Sarkosuchus, since there's a lot of different strategies I can use for the ocean caves. I can try cheating it again with the Kirkinos, using Sarkos on follow, one as bait for the other dinos, but also as two to scare Piranha. Or I can use my Rock Drake to camo into the cave, but um, I think it'll fall out of camo if I go if I dismount it. Also got the Baryonyxes to try and get a Basilo, but that'd be really hard to find. So just really kind of taming a bit of everything to try my options. I also begun breeding another wave of Megatherians for the Breed Mother, and then I spent the rest of the night just farming honey with some rather unsettling company, so that I could begin producing veggie cakes while breeding up my first set of Therizino hatchlings. And so after that, I went to kill an alpha to get some primate for the Sarkos. And then I spent the entirety of day 82 sorting out my Rex eggs, as where I've got so many Rexes constantly breeding now, I'm just getting more and more eggs, which is great because I need to grow my boss armies quickly. Speaking of boss armies, I remembered blueprints. I should probably start thinking about blueprints. So I checked my collection and I only have a Rex one, so nothing else, especially Uteranus, which is very important. Oh, speaking of Uteranus, I should probably go tame one. And I got really, really lucky and I found a 120 quickly. I normally had the worst luck with Uteranus on the island, but this one really came in. However, I did have a bit of a rough time trying to tame it and even managed to net my own bug. But it was all good. I got the Uteranus knocked out. And while searching for a female one, my computer crashed for the first time in years. We concluded Ark was causing my PC to overheat on a very hot day next to the radiator. So that was unfortunate. Thankfully, I did manage to spawn back in perfectly alive, and I even found a 150 male Uteranus, and as tempted as I was, I had to pass it. Eventually, after quite a bit more searching, I did find a 140 female. However, again, as lucky as I am to find his high levels, the actual taming processes themselves were really messy. She nearly died, and while on a high torpor flea, really refused to eat anything. Eventually managed to make her do a drive-by hit on me, and thus a corpse as well. And thankfully, eventually, got both the Uteranus tamed. So after a whole bunch of experience grinding, my next goal is to try to get a character so I can farm some higher level OSDs to get some saddle blueprints. However, after a problem involving my server provider, I had to move this challenge map off to another location, and in the process, the map corrupted. All of the backups corrupted. And as much as I've been tempted just to cheat all of my progress back, this map took a long time to build and I frankly don't really have it in me right now to redo it all. But I will say it was all about the journey. Tech Cave, eh. But the Crystal Wyvern air, the many, many ice worms, the volcano incident, that horrible Giga Tame, the Beach Reaper Queens, the second volcano incident. There was a lot of really memorable moments in this, and this 100 days video has regrettably taken two years to conclude due to a lot of very poorly timed health problems. So um, it really was about the journey, and I am just really happy to share the absolute shit fuckery this bullshit challenge was. Oh.